What's going on, guys? My name is Julian Young. I am the host of the Blockchain Brief, where every episode we are interviewing innovators and founders in the blockchain and crypto space. Today, I am beyond excited to have Arthur Falls, a director of communication for Definity, arguably one of the most exciting and hype projects in the space today. Uh, on top of that, we also have Eric Pinos, our technologist in residence. So we're really excited to have you, Arthur. Thank you again for taking the time. Thank you, Gillian. And uh, it's, it's great to be here with you, Eric, as well. This is, uh, it's really exciting. Yeah, great show. So let's jump right into it, right? Give me a little bit of background on yourself. How did you get involved with Definity? And then we'd love to hear a little bit about your uh, co-founders as well, Tom and Dominic. Sure. So uh, my name is Arthur Falls, uh, as you just said. Um, I got into, I mean, my story is basically in 2013, I was on the couch, um, unemployed in Melbourne and uh, spent the entire year learning about Bitcoin. Uh, come 2014, I needed something to do with all of this useless knowledge. So I made a podcast about second generation uh, blockchain uh, platforms. Um, then I went to, um, I spent a lot of time in the BitShares and Next forums. And I think I encountered Dominic's ideas, uh, Dominic Williams, who's the inventor and founder of Definity. I, I encountered his ideas in the next forums without no NXT forums, without knowing that this was, that it was him. I'll, I did interview him that year about, um, about Ripple actually, funnily enough. But so I did have, I had a podcast that year called Beyond Bitcoin that I ended uh, after 27 episodes because nothing seemed to be working. And in 2015, I started another one called the Ether Review, which ran for two years. Recently, I, um, oh, during that period, I was hired by Consensus and I worked there on their content marketing strategy for uh, about 18 months. Um, and then I changed the name of the Ether Review to the third web and changed the introduction music, much to the chagrin of many fans of the original track. Um, and, uh, and started looking at new technologies because I wasn't satisfied with what was happening in the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, during all of that time, I'd been paying attention to Dom's work and I'd interviewed him a few times. I'd been to the Hacker House on Ramona Street in Palo Alto and way back when there were only a, a couple of guys there. And, and so I watched the project develop and progress and become more and more realistic. And then they came out with the, uh, with the demo network in October of last year. And it was like, wow, Threshold really works. These guys have really done it. And, um, and they offered me a job and <laughs> I couldn't possibly refuse. So that's me. Um, Dominic, is, he is, his background was in, um, was in MMOs, you know, massive multiplayer online games. Uh, he held, he, built a game entirely himself called Fight My Monster. Um, and that was at one point, one of the most successful games in the uh, eight to 12 market in, in Britain. Downloads, I know, I, I literally just watched the Epicenter interview. So I'm, I'm very familiar with it, what he, just, what he built. <laughs> it is, it's kind of funny, although I think sometimes he doesn't like to mention it so much because it's not quite so serious as some of these other projects. But nonetheless, Really, really, like it's nothing to shake a stick at. That was back in the days before cloud, remember, as well. So he had to actually build and configure his hosting infrastructure himself. Um, and, and so there's, there's, there's something, some kind of deep connection there that I, th I don't think is often made, and that is that he had to figure out distributed computing and, um, and large-scale uh, ser you know, server infrastructure Sure. And run that while also developing a uh, while also developing this uh, this online game. So there's quite a lot going on in that in that picture. That's more than just your average guy who's I don't know. I can't imagine there are many single individuals who who um, build MMOs. But anyway, um, and then uh, and so he had the idea post um, after that to develop a gaming cryptocurrency um, that was called Pebble. And that was in 2000, it was conspicuously, I didn't interview him about that in 2014, but he was on my shortlist. And, um, but he gave up on the idea. And in 2015, so the story goes, he realized that the only way forward was with a verifiable random function. It was the only way to create a scalable uh, decentralized computing network. Um, we can talk a little bit more about that later on, but that was about the time when Definity started to become an idea and um and he founded it and he was friends with tom ding a bunch of these guys worked at a uh, a company called mirror 
which Nick Zabo was there, a bunch of other key players. It's kind of, it's even, it's slightly opaque. People don't really talk too much about it. I don't think it was a good experience, but, um, but, but a lot of these like key figures, it sounds like the ultimate, the ultimate dream team of crypto. Sure. And, um, and, and so he met a bunch of people there. Um, Tom Ding was kicking around and, um, and Tom Ding had String Labs, which was his incubator. He incubated Definity. Definity has since uh, uh, kind of outgrown String Labs and taken on its own funding. Um, Tom has set EO, dominant ETO, and, um, and the whole thing is beginning to go on the back of the talent that, was, um, that existed in these guys' networks and also the, the kind of the brilliant people that are beginning to see that, that Definity really has some, some unique and exciting technology. Sure, sure. So there's a perfect segue into it, right? Talk, talk to us a little bit about Definity and what's the problem you guys are trying to solve. Well, the easiest way to characterize it in a couple of sentences is that we're trying to solve centralization in cloud services. And I know that sounds phenomenally ambitious, especially when you think that the opportunity is the size of the entire web and business logic cloud computing market. You know, I mean, typically, typically people think of Definity as a blockchain project, but we don't think of Definity as a blockchain project. We see it as an effort to go after a, a traditional um, industry. And I think, I mean, you know, there was a, uh, Chris Dixon had a Medium post recently that everyone, every man and his dog has read. Um, and uh, it was about the importance of decentralization. And he made the point that uh, in today's world, if you want to succeed, you have to build on top of a privately owned platform often multiple privately owned platforms with multiple layers of tooling and, and all this weird stuff. And you need someone who understands how all these things work. They're proprietary. You know, you've got Amazon with all of these modules and, and, um, and kind of their own way that they envision um, cloud services. DigitalOcean, Microsoft Azure, these things are proprietary. They're, they're not uh, perfectly interoperable. Um, then on top of that, you have, you know, <laughs> Google as a this kind of dodgy gatekeeper for the entire internet. You have Facebook, which commands 40% of all attention online. All of these businesses were built on open protocols. Sure. And yet now they've become the gatekeeper to those open protocols. And we need to find a way to take the value that all of these businesses create and build those into a new layer of open protocols that people can, can use to start innovating again. And I mean, that is, there we go. Yeah, that's, that's how I'll characterize it. I think that's, that's a pretty good, um, I think that's a pretty good rundown of the idea. Yep, yep. All right, so, so let's talk about practical use cases here, right? So where do you see this technology being adopted in sort of the near term and then also down the road? Like where does it make the biggest impact? Well, it, it impacts absolutely everything. So uh, let's take t let's take a uh, an Android app for example, right? Like traditionally, you write your app, you upload it to the uh, the Android store, the user download the the Google Play store, the user downloads it, runs it on their phone, um, it picks up its resources from you know various places where you've hosted them, probably on uh, on you know, your your EC2 instance or whatever, um, you know, and um, but it's all you're utilizing all of these centralized services or centrally controlled services. So the idea with Definity is that you write your app, you upload the whole thing to the Definity World Computer, uh, Cloud 3.0 Internet Computer, how, however you, you you know whatever whatever jargon you choose to apply to it, and um, and that application purely just has pointers to the code and and data that is stored remotely in Definity. And what you then do is you just farm out all of that computation in the same way that, um, in the same way that we imagine in the future farming, um, outsourcing computation from ultralight uh, devices that exist in the in the that the consumer holds in their hand to um, to external um, you know to external services, remote services uh, provided by Google. Say, classic example is Shazam, right? Shazam doesn't use your phone to detect the, um, you know, it, it, uh, to detect what's going on with, um, or to, to process audio. What it does is it takes a, um, 
that takes, a, I guess, an audio signature and sends that off to a, to a remote server to be compared against the signatures of other audio and comes back with a res and returns a result. So we want to do something like that, but we want to decentralize the, those remote services. And, um, and the, other, the other benefit of that is that this is not something that ever goes down. It's 100% uptime. And, the, uh, and if you want to, up, the user never has to update their application, right? Because whatever, uh, whatever code they're running, whatever data they're accessing, it's always, if, if it's up to you to provide that, then you can always make sure that you're providing the newest version of the application and you're fixing bugs on the fly, et cetera. Got it, got it. Awesome. And then, so how does the token come into play? Uh, well, the token, very much like Ethereum, the token is used to pay for services rendered uh, on the network. So, and, and we haven't even discussed, we haven't really discussed the nuts and bolts of Definity. But say you've got a, uh, but you know, the miners need to be rewarded. And by miners, I mean the, the, uh, the participants who are actually performing the work on the network. Um, those that are, that are securing the network need to be rewarded as well. Um, and that is, that's taking place through a proof of stake scheme, uh, as well as a seniorage scheme that, uh, that subsidizes uh, the early provisioning of the network. And then we also have an on-chain governance system that requires posting a security deposit in order to participate in the governance of the network. And likely uh, voting in that, in that system will be uh, weighted by the size of the security deposit that has been, uh, that has been placed. Got it. Got it. I think this is a perfect time to actually have Eric jump in here with some tech questions. Eric, what do you got? Yeah, so I, I was interested in knowing more about um, what is the, the technology that's going into this that lets you be able to run these kinds of decentralized cloud apps? So, like I was saying before, the real magic, the thing that really blew me away uh, was the idea of using a verifiable random function to serve instead of the randomness that um, okay, so when we think of Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin mining involves two components. There's an economic cost to uh, mining an invalid block, right? And, and that's, your, um, that's the cost for trying to cheat the game. Um, the way that you make the game difficult to cheat is you bring in this randomness of, you know, it's a, uh, no one knows who's going to create that block. It's just, it's pure chance. It's pure brute force and trial and error. And one lucky miner gets to mint that block. Um, and that's that lucky miner, it's perfectly randomly selected depending on uh, weighted by the amount of, uh, of uh, compute performance that they're actually bringing to the table. And that randomness and that economic cost are the two components that, that make mining work. And with proof of stake, Sure, we can use this. Um, we can use a token that's put up as a security deposit to, as the um, as the the economic penalty, or, or we can provide an economic reward, or, or both, as as is going to be the case um, for for not uh, playing by the rules. But how do you make? How do you get randomness? How do you make this hard to cheat? How do you make the game hard to cheat? And um, the way that a lot of blockchains are doing this right now, uh, they're looking for ways to derive randomness from their actual blockchain. And the problem with that is that there are all kinds of ways in which the state of the blockchain can be manipulated by various parties. So you can get something that's good enough randomness, but you can never get great, you can never get true randomness, true unpredictability. And so the idea of, uh, the idea of Definity is that using Threshold cryptography, known as BLS signatures, is the specific signature scheme, the specific cryptography we're using. We can create a system whereby a large group of participating nodes are selected using the randomness from the previous round at random. They, uh, they use a distributed key generation algorithm to generate components of a key, and then they sign, the, uh, they sign a block uh, at Simult or not simultaneously, they sign it and, uh, and circulate it. And as soon as a sufficient threshold has been reached, that block is committed to the blockchain. The hash or, or the signature from that block is then used to select the next group of validators. 
and those group of validators generate a new key, which uh, new key portions, which they then use to sign the next uh, block of transactions. And the idea, ultimately, we're just signing, um, we're really just signing state routes, um, because this is ultimately going to be at the core of a much larger uh, structure of multiple shards of, uh, of state. Because at the end of the day, this is, you know, we need to, we need to um, scale this out using um, sharding mechanisms, which I can't really discuss here because they're complex and a bit beyond me. But, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a simple project. It's very far reaching. Yeah. But far that randomness, that randomness is, is the magic because you can use that to power all kinds of, all kinds of services on the network, among them um, an unlimited uh, sharding space. So we don't have to have, we're not in a situation where we're building one shard and then another. We can shard infinitely because we can use that randomness to make it impossible to game the, uh, the, the crypto economics that are taking place across all of these different, um, all of these different sharded spaces. Wow, very, very impressive stuff. So just to be conscious of your time and also every, all of our viewers here on the Blockchain Brief, uh, if you want to meet Arthur and Dominic at the uh, MIT Bitcoin Expo, Eric, I'll give you a little plug here on March uh, 16th, 17th. Hopefully Arthur is going to be joining us and Dominic's also going to be speaking at the event. Uh, you got to check out the Definity Project. It's one, again, that we're very extremely, extremely, extremely excited about. Um, Arthur, before we let you go, is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I ramble on, but I didn't mention that we're using WebAssembly, the WebAssembly virtual machine, and we've hired Andreas Rosberg, who was the co-designer of WebAssembly, to, um, to work on that for us. Um, we also have Ben Lin, the L from BLS Cryptography, uh, who, who's also working for us. Um, we, uh, we also have this entire <laughs> on-chain governance system that is, um, it's a, it's, that's worth an interview in and of itself. Um, the Definity project is far reaching. It's got so many great things to talk about. You know, we could go forever. It, it's really tough for 10, 15 minutes. We, we got to do a separate one where we get your whole team on here and do like an hour long one. Cause again, oh, yeah. it's really, really impressive stuff. Um, Arthur, thank you again so much for your time. Um, really looking forward to kind of tracking the progress and see where you guys go. Um, if there's any, uh, Eric, do you have anything else you want to sort of say before we sign off here? Uh, no, I think we covered most of it. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Arthur, thank you again. Appreciate the time. My pleasure. Awesome. Talk to you very soon.